that it caused so much pressure in his heart that it didn't just stop, it exploded. And that's also his lungs exploded and that caused his lungs to come up out of out of his nose in little pieces with his blood. And Marcos was pronounced dead and I had no idea this stuff was going on. I did not know. All I know is I was praying in tongues. Shama Hothab, I was just praying in tongues. It was such warfare prayer. And until the point where I literally broke into God's presence, his tangible presence. And he told me what to do. He said, Becky, come against the spirit of death over Marcos right now. I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Thank you for tuning in. For this week's what's going to be a really seriously special conversation, I have joining me today. It's such a privilege and an honor to be able to have a conversation with my special guest today, who is a woman of deep faith, deep love, deep intimacy with Jesus. She has seen countless numbers of people, thousands of people healed around the nations. She's such an inspiration. So just be expectant. You're going to receive fresh hope today, fresh ignition of faith and healing for your lives. As I have a conversation with a precious woman who is the, uh, she is the, the host of a TV show that goes around the world called Empowered for Healing and Miracles. And she is now the author of an extraordinary new book. It's called Decrees That Heal. And it's based on many, many years of a ministry that's taken her around the world that has seen her uh, she, praying for many, many people and seeing thousands of people, like I said, healed. So it is my joy and my honor to welcome into the conversation with me today, Becky Dvorak. Becky, welcome. Thank you for having me. It, it, it's a privilege to be here with you today. Oh, it's a privilege to have you on. And I love talking to people that live the walk that genuinely have a deep relationship with Jesus, that trust him, and that are moving in signs and wonders and miracles, and that just in that partnership with Holy Spirit that produces so much fruit. And it's what we all need, isn't it? People like you guys write in from all over the world. There's so many people who are sick and needing help, needing a fresh touch of Holy Spirit. So this is your moment. So Becky, I just for those of uh, of those watching and listening today that aren't familiar with your ministry, will you just share with us? I was when I was reading your book, I was reading uh, some of your testimony from the time that you were in the orphanage in Guatemala, where there were desperate medical needs, and so mm -hmm. and Holy Spirit showed up in profound ways. So, can we start there? Will you give a bit of background of like what what the experience was for you in Guatemala? Well. We had, um, the Lord had put it on our hearts to start a children's home in Guatemala. And, and you know what? It was training 101 from the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. um, because we started, we started our first house that we built. We started with children right off the streets. Um, we started with boys first, and then the Lord brought five babies. And, and I had never been in such spiritual warfare before. People think, oh, sweet orphans and all that. No, they're coming off the street and they are so full of demons. And, and the Lord had to teach me how to stand my ground, how to operate in the authority that, that you know, I've heard we've had, you know, and it's like, no, now you need to walk in it. It, it go, needs to go from the, from the head into the heart and, and, and put it into action. And, and that was, that was quite the training. It was, it was on ground, you know, boots on the ground type of training. And, but I saw the miraculous and then he would take me to different, one was an HIV AIDS hospice and another was another hospital for, for very, very um, difficult situations for people. And they were there for life. And um, I mean, he just really trained me 
And one of the most amazing testimonies is when he brought a little baby boy to us at one day old. We named him Marcos. And Marcos is now our adopted son. Marcos is now 21 years old. And, but anyway, when he was one month old, he died. He physically died and everything in him died. His heart and his lungs didn't just stop. They exploded on the inside of him where his lungs came up out of his nose and pieces with his blood and all of that. His kidneys were dead. His his brain was dead. I mean, it's a very long testimony. I won't go into all of that. But I remember when it all happened, I walked into the room and, and Marcos was one month old. I fed him, changed him, did everything you did. Do when, when, when you when you when you, you know, feed a baby and get ready, get them ready for sleep. And mm-hmm. and, and like I said, it was dinner time, and so we had these three long tables, and and all the boys from the streets and and the other babies were in the high chairs and stuff. And Marcos was the youngest at the time, and so I laid him down in our bed because he fell asleep in my arms, and and I ate with everybody, and then I went back into the room because I was going to um, check on Marcos and all of that, and I'm thankful I did. Um, because when I walked into the room, I felt something eerie, put it, just kind of put it nice. I felt something very dark in there. Mm-hmm. And and I walked up to Marcos and he no longer was breathing in. He was just breathing out. <laughs> he was one month old. What I walked into was sudden infant death syndrome. I didn't know what I was walking into at the time. And, you know, we live we lived out in the village. And up in in the mountains of Guatemala, and it was main rush hour. And to get into the city to where you could find a decent hospital would have been forty five minute drive on a normal day. I mean, our normal time. But then we had the rush hour, which goes from like about three o'clock to nine o'clock at night. And it because there's only two ways in and out of the major city. And so the other choice was to go the other direction into a small Latin town where everything is just terrible, you know, as far as medical care and that sort of thing. Um, I could not go. Um, I just called my husband. I said, David, come here. He walked in and in three minutes he was gone with Marcos. I had no idea where he was because cell phones had just come into the country and we owned one. And so there was no communication between us. So I didn't know where David went. I didn't know what was going on with Marcos. I just knew it was really bad. I called all the other boys who were petrified of what was going on. And I said, we need to pray for Marcos right now. And so we all joined hands and they prayed the best they knew how. And I said, okay, you guys are going to behave yourselves, which was pretty amazing. But they were so frightened by the whole thing they did. And I said, I'm going in my room and I'm praying. And I shut the door and I just prayed in tongues. I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed, you know, just red hot warfare type of praying in tongues. And as I was praying in tongues, I was praying for a long time. I had no idea what was going on with Marcos, not a clue. I just knew it was bad. And I just prayed and prayed and prayed until I broke into the into the tangible presence of God. and. As I'm praying, he he spoke to me in an audible voice. He called me by name. I wasn't startled. I wasn't afraid. Nothing. I just said, he said, Becky. And I stopped and I remember looking up and I said, what? I mean, I knew who it was, which is biblical. You know, the sheep hear his voice, another voice we don't, we don't follow. Um, when he speaks to you that way, you don't have to question, oh, is this a is this God? Is this the devil? You don't have to do any of that. I mean, you yeah. know, uh, yeah, you know him, and he knows you, and he and he knows you by name. He calls you by name. And anyway, I said, "What?" And he said, "You need to come against the spirit of death over Marcos right now." Now you have to know that I had before this happened. The Lord had put me on um, uh, a two-year training period with the Holy Spirit. And and without me knowing it, he sent me on three 
40 day fast in one year. And I wouldn't recommend that to anyone unless God spoke it to you. And he did. And each time he gave me an assignment, I had, I was to read through the word of God and journal my way through it. And I did it, you know, in those 40 days, I'd go through the word and the, and, and, you know, and then he gave me a break and then he said, do it again. And, and so I, I went into another 40 day fast, read through the word. And then I, you know, I didn't know that what he was doing, you know, <laughs> and yeah. I just know the third time he said, do it again. And I did it again. And that's really hard. <laughs> it's physically hard, but I'm telling you supernaturally, it was awesome. It was just awesome. But, um, so I didn't know, I mean, the Lord was preparing me and he told me to study healing and nothing else until he told me. And so that's what I was doing. And I didn't know, you know, what, you know, he didn't pre-warn me that, you know, Marcos was coming and this was going to happen. I was just ready in season when, when the, when the attack came, I was ready to face the battle head on. I was ready. I was prepared to fight the good fight of faith. And it was a battle because the spirit of death was so after that little one. Um, his birth mother tried to abort him several times and failed. And then the third time she brought him to a hospital and brought went to a hospital and they would have removed him, you know, but a Christian nurse, and I'm so thankful for that Christian nurse, went up to her and said, please don't do this, because she was far along in that, in that, in that pregnancy. And, and she says, please don't do this. And she called it what it was. She said it's sin. She didn't beat around the bush, but she also didn't beat the woman down. And she gave the woman a simple plan. She says, please, Complete the pregnancy, and if you still don't want this baby, you only have a short time left. If you still don't want this baby, we will find someone that does. But please give this baby life. And you know, I always say desperate people do desperate things, and they do. Mm-hmm. And 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 they just need a plan sometimes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and to know how to get through. Yes, to know how to get through this. Mm-hmm. And anyway, that's how Marcos came to us. He was one day old, and we named him Marcos. And he is our adopted son now. And we had no idea what was going on. But here we are. I'm praying in tongues. I walked into sudden infant death syndrome. I didn't know what was going on. My husband, my husband's part of the story was, there was no time to go down into Guatemala City because Marcos no longer was breathing. And what does someone need when, they, when they're when they not breathing? They need oxygen. So he had to take his chance and go the other way, down the highway, into a small Latin town. And the first hospital he went to, they had no oxygen. And the second hospital, they, they, they told him how to find the second hospital. You know, it's not nicely marked like you know in the western world it, it was just, it's chaotic and he found this place and they saw marcos and they grabbed him out of his arms ran up these stairs and and with one of those handheld oxygen pumps they were trying to revive him and but marcos's heart had been beating dry for so long that it caused so much pressure in his heart that it didn't just stop, it exploded. And that also his lungs exploded, and that caused his lungs to come up out of out of his nose in little pieces with his blood. And Marcos was pronounced dead, and I had no idea this stuff was going on. I did not know. All I know is I was praying in tongues. Shamahota, I was just praying in tongues. It was such warfare prayer. And until the point where I literally broke into God's presence, his tangible presence. And he told me what to do. He said, Becky, come against the spirit of death over Marcos right now. And these are the words that came out of my mouth. And there's no reason for them to have come out of my mouth that way, except for nowadays, teaching and training people. The Lord knows what he's doing. Yeah. And and I said, Marcos, 
I renounce the spirit of death and I release the spirit of life in you. And I had been studying healing, but no one had taught me what the Lord had told me to do. And, and, and then he said, now, Becky, now I want you to speak to Marcus's spirit directly. And no one had taught me that. All I know is in the word, he's, you know, in the Bible, Jesus sent his word and it healed the people. And so I just heard myself say the following. I said, Marcos, I know there's a distance between us. Like I said, I didn't even know where he was. And it was in the natural impossible for him to hear me. Um, but in the but in the spirit realm, there's no distance, there's no barriers. And so I said, in the natural, there's a distance between us. But in the supernatural, there's no distance. Marcos, I need you to start breathing on your own now. Like I said, I had no idea he had been pronounced dead. I didn't know his heart and his lungs exploded and the lungs were coming up out of him in little pieces with all his blood. I had no idea. They no longer were working on him. They brought my husband to another part. It was this big, like, empty ward, um, hospital ward. And, and Marcos, they just had him on this bed and were trying to, you know, had been trying to revive him. Well, you know, well, now he's pronounced dead. And they're, and they're ha- walking my husband through, through the signing of paperwork so the coroner could come and do his business. I knew none of that was happening, and I'm so thankful that I didn't. People say, why didn't you go? I had four other babies. I had 12 children. My help for the day had gone home. And so I just had uh, a helper that helped me with the mountains of laundry and everything, which was tremendous, and all of that kind of stuff. And so she had already gone home. And so we couldn't leave, you know, and so I was at home, but I was right where God wanted me. He knew where he wanted me to be. And, and so no one is working with Marcos at all. No one. And all of a sudden, I mean, they're not even near Marcos. And all of a sudden, Marcos takes in this great big breath. And they all stop what they're doing. And they're like going, what? And they went running over to him. And I wish the story ended there, but it didn't. It went on for a month. To touch Marcos would send him into a convulsion and it would all happen again. But I was always right where I needed to be. He was transferred to different hospitals. Four different hospitals through the whole process. And every time they moved him, the same thing would happen, and I would be right there as they were transporting him into a new emergency room, and I would do what I, I, I would do what I had to do in Jesus' name. You will not die. You will fulfill your destiny. You come back now, and he would come back, and they would be just like they'd be shutting curtains on me and everything. But it didn't matter. I had already done because I totally believe in the power of faith filled words that's the whole thing about decrees that heal yeah your words when you believe in them they work yeah wow my gosh that's so moving and so inspirational he's the god of the impossible and i love the preparation that's so encouraging that we can trust the process that he will get us ready as we're walking in relationship with jesus he will get us ready for what's ahead so that Amen. we can, it may be challenging, like, of course, that was incredibly difficult for you. But the miracle that's come out of it is just incredible. So for people that are facing really difficult situations right now, I know now you teach people, you equip people all over the world. You know, your ministry has, like I said at the beginning, you know, you've, you've seen so many people healed miraculously. And your faith is inspirational. You can feel it as you're speaking. Like you can feel, I can feel the solidity of who you are, you know, in the spirit. It's just his grace. Hey, it's amazing. Amazing. So for people, for people that are really struggling, what would you 
like they've been maybe pressing in for healing for a long time, praying for other people, not seeing it happen. What would you say are the most, some of the most important keys, how they can get unstuck and move forward? Okay. This is what I teach people. Yeah. I say, if you're believing for a miracle, you have to align your words and your actions together around what I like to teach on is Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, by his stripes I'm healed and understand what that means. And so I give an example and I'll give them, I'll give you this example. If you say you're believing for a miracle, you need to speak the right words. You need to speak words full of life and health, strength. You need to speak no matter what. And the people around you need to be speaking the same. You need to, you need to pick and choose your battles wisely. Stay away from people that don't believe. Kick them out of your, your immediate vicinity. You can't control what people say and do around you. But you've got to be speaking life and healing God's word over you. And then your actions have to align with those words. For example, if you're saying you are believing for a miracle, you're in a life and death situation, speak the word of God, speak God's healing promises over yourself. Come up with a confession of faith. My confession of faith for Marcos is, is you will not die. You will live. You will fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. No matter what those doctors said, they knew what they were going to hear. We, we didn't have a choice. We were in a children's, we had a children's home. We had to bring them into, you know, I, I, into the hospital. And I'm not against hospitals, anything. I, I, I'm not. But it's hard to find people of faith in those places. It is. But I'm saying to, to the people, line your words up with God's healing word and say nothing else. And then if you say you're believing for a miraculous healing, you cannot be planning a funeral hmm. because your actions prove what you really believe. If you're planning for a funeral, you are going to have that funeral because it takes words to plan that funeral. You've got to express it. And that is and that and that is coming out of your heart. You know, and, and and that's what you truly believe. And so what do you do if say say you um have already planned a funeral? What do you do? I say rip the whole thing up, tear it up, and start over. And instead of making a plan to die or a will to die, make a will to live. It's so powerful, Becky. Get out a calendar. Sounds so basic, but it is so powerful. I've just seen so much happen for people. Get out a calendar. Get out a piece of paper. I don't care whatever you have to write on. Write it out. No matter what the situation is, maybe your loved one is laying on a sick bed right now. Perhaps they are. Do something that that is a step of faith right where they're at. For them, it may be sitting up, getting them to sit up. You may have to do the sitting up for them. I mean, whatever it is, um, maybe they're not to that point. Maybe you're not to that point. Well, you get out a piece of paper. This is what I'm doing today. I'm going to walk around the house. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to walk. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk down the hallway once. Going to go back and, and sit on a chair or whatever for a while. And I'm going to do it again. You know, wherever you're at. And then the next day, what are you going to do the next day or the next, what, the next hour, the next day, the next week? And do it. Make a plan to live and speak life. Get people around you that will speak life. Use like your phone for when you're like discouraged. Record. Take the decrees, um, decrees that heal book that I wrote. 
find decrees in there. You may have to refashion them a little bit to fit your specific situation. Do so. Record it on your phone. Share it with people. Or when you're feeling discouraged, click that and listen to it. Let technology help you get the power of the spoken word out over your situation. And make that will to live. You have to choose life every day. And in certain situations, it's every hour. For some, it's every breath. I mean, it depends upon the situation you're in. Mm -hmm. Hey, my son, Marcos, by faith, I raised him from the dead with words of faith. I wasn't even near him. Just amazing, Becky. It's the truth of the scripture, isn't it? That the power of life or death, it's in the tongue. It's in the spoken word. And as we align ourselves with the perspective of Jesus, the mind of God, power is releasing from our lives, creative transformational healing power, as you have seen many, many, many times. Becky, I would love it if you would pray for people right now. Yeah, Yeah, please do. Any of you that need healing right now, just grab this prayer. Grab this prayer. We are in agreement. Amen. Right now, in Jesus' name, lay your hand on your body. In the name of Jesus, I renounce a spirit of death that is coming against you right now. I renounce this spirit of death. In Jesus' name, I renounce cancerous tumors, cancerous cells. I renounce I renounce every form of death that is attacking your body right now, no matter what it is. I renounce it. I renounce death to your memory cells in Jesus' name. I renounce these ungodly labels, medical labels that do not line up with Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. They actually are against it. In Jesus' name, I renounce the power behind labels in Jesus name. And I release the healing power of the blood of Jesus into your every cell, tissue, organ, and system to go in and cleanse your body from all residue of death in Jesus name, to purify your body, to fill it with the living word, to fill it with the power of Holy Spirit, I I release resurrection power to dead body parts, whatever they may be. I release creative miracles into your heart. Just like with Marcos, he received a new heart by faith in one day. The next day, he had a brand new heart that was functioning into your lungs. He had a new set of lungs that were functioning by words of faith. In Jesus' name, dead kidneys came back to life overnight and were functioning. And in about 20 minutes, a half hour, whatever it was, a new brain was spoken into existence from a distance. And so this stuff works. Faith works. It is the most costly, the most valuable currency that we have. And we, as True followers of Jesus possess it. Whatever it is, take the limits off of God. Speak life into your body. Speak speak death into cancerous tumors and things of that nature in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. And go deep into the cellular realm and release the spirit of life to flow. Recreation right now recreation in Jesus name into your cells and into the DNA of your cells, into your memory, into every cell, tissue, organ, and system of your body that they work together in harmony according to the redemptive blood of Jesus, according to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, by his stripes, you are healed, you are made whole. And begin to live like you believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Amen. Wow. Wow. The weight 
on that prayer, the weight of the presence of Jesus. I am so excited. Amen. Send in your testimonies as you receive the manifestation of the fullness of your healing. Let us know we can celebrate with you and give hope to other people. Becky, amen. We agree. We agree. Break full agreement, family, with any any agreement with death, degeneration, sickness, decay. These things are not your inheritance in Jesus. You're a brand Amen. new creation. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? We are the body of Christ, the body of God walking around in the earth. There's so much power, dunamis power moving through you right now because of the Spirit of God. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you manifest the healing power of who you are to every system and cell of our brothers and sisters' bodies. And we agree for those you're praying for too. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm believing in our generation, Becky, that we will see sickness a thing of the past in the body of Christ because there'll be explosive Amen. faith like you walk in as normal Christian experience. So, and it's for all of us. Yes, every single It's for one. all believers. Yeah. Amen. Not Amen. Just a few. Amen. We Amen. Agree. Thank you for giving us your precious time. You are an inspiration. We are so blessed to have you on today. Thank you for having me. And guys, where you can get hold of Becky's new book will be under the show notes. There will be a link for you to go on and find if you need that. Well, everybody needs to decree the truth over them. <laughs> but if you specifically need it for healing, then it's available for you. And guys, thank you for giving us your precious time. And I look forward to being with you next week. God bless. As we consecrate ourselves, giving all that we are to Jesus, we will experience his love we will experience freedom. The more we lean into him, the more we surrender, the more power comes through us. God's going to encounter you.